Blog Talk Radio. Thank you, Howard. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. The dollar buys a nickel's worth. Banks are going bust. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street, and there's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do, and there's no end to it. We know the air is unfit to breathe, and our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller, and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel-belted radios, and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to ride. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. So, I want you to get up now. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! That's Peter Finch and Network, uh, about nearly 50 years old, from uh, writer Patty Chayefsky and director Sidney Lumet, I believe. Uh, again, this is True Broward uh, TV show slash Red Broward Superpower Hour. We're here on Blog Talk Radio. Uh, we use this because we can usually uh, have guests call in, and we do have a chat feature set up on the website there. If you look down below the, I guess where you're listening, there's a chat thing. Oh, now I'm disconnected. Uh, so I was going to say use that because the call-in number is not assigned. We have to schedule a show first, even though this is a show. And we were on standby waiting. We had the countdown for the show. And once it said, you're on the air, it's like, oh, we're not connected. So we tried to connect, and we weren't connected, so that's why there was a delay, and there's a different link probably now for this episode. It's only going to be 15 minutes tonight. Short episode. In the future, we'll go back to like we used to do, which a uh, concurrent show with Facebook Live, so you're able to watch on Facebook and comment there and share it there. Or you could listen to this on Blog Talk Radio and it's saved as a podcast in the iTunes podcasts area, so you can listen to this at any time, whenever you're bored. Uh, just amazing how Network, 50 years old, and still very relevant today, what you heard there, Howard Beale going insane. He was the Walter Cronkite for you uh, youngsters. That was a very popular newsman uh, years ago. And very relevant to everything going on. So tonight we're talking about the Coral Springs election. It's up a week from today for seat two on the city commission. We've been covering it last couple of weeks. Not much else uh, going on. It's very slow. No other election really until beginning of next year. But there's always the national politics, but we leave that to the other people to talk about. So yesterday... Uh, was it yesterday? Yeah. Find out that the Sun Sentinel has endorsed Karim Wahid for the city commission seat. Now, if you've been following along on True Broward and Red Broward, you'll know that Karim Wahid and his campaign attacked the Sun Sentinel and its reporter, Lisa Hurriash, for writing a candidate bio about Wahid, uh, highlighted his defense work. He's an attorney. He defended a lot of terror-related suspects. Uh, He was a league advisor for CARE, and we pointed out that he leaves that out. Obviously, he wants to just be a civil defense lawyer. He doesn't want to be a well-known criminal defense lawyer who defends terror suspects. So they attacked the reporter. Uh, The story was changed 
uh, softened a little bit, uh, but that didn't appease Wahid's team, especially his campaign manager, a uh, elected official named Alyssa Schaefer, who said that the story was racist, xenophobic, it would lead to violence, uh, claimed that the reporter apologized. We talked to uh, the actual the reporter tweeted out to us that there was no apology, that in all fairness, it was just a little change to the story, uh, which is fine. Reporters change things uh, in the interest of fairness all the time, but there was no apology. We caught up with Wahid and his campaign team last week at a candidate forum in Coral Springs, and Ms. Schaefer, who is an elected official, Broward Soil and Water District member slash whatever they do, and she said that she didn't lie about it, that she has an email from the reporter saying they were she was apologizing. So we contacted Julie Anderson, who's the editor-in-chief of the paper, and she told us, nope, there was no apology. Okay. Well, the other day, all the candidates went to the Sun Sentinel to be interviewed by the editorial board for the endorsement, and Wahid was there, and... Rosemary O'Hara, who's the editorial page editor. Hold on here. Sorry, getting interrupted. And Sergio Bustos was there. I'm not sure what reporters are there. But usually in these things, we get word of what happened. Uh, and it was, it was brought up. The apology was brought up. And Wahid said that he got a phone call. So the story's changed now from emails to phone calls directly to the candidate. And Wahid said that Lisa Hurriash, in fact, apologized to him. Now, you would think that the editorial page editor, Rosemary O'Hara, would say something. Hmm? They also talked about, Mohid talked about the story and again mentioned it was racist, complained that one of his opponents, Diane Simpson, was using the ad or the story as a Facebook ad, basically sharing an article from the Sun Sentinel, the paper of record here in Broward County. It was a candidate profile of all six candidates. She was sharing it, but for some reason they were attacking her, and we documented this on redbrower.com, attacking her for sharing a racist article, implying that she was a racist for sharing the article, which was simply candidate profile filled with facts. Inconvenient facts if you want to like make sure that voters aren't turned off by maybe your association with a group like CARE or a certain terror suspects. Uh, but that's politics, and there's a lot of criminal defense lawyers that run for office, and they do make the argument, you know, hey, I, you know, everyone deserves defense, fine, but your whole career promoting yourself as this super defense lawyer for your terror trials, and suddenly now anyone who mentions it's a xenophobe or a racist. So that's the interview. You figure, you know, paper's going to stand by their reporter. No way he gets the endorsement. Well, lo and behold, last night they endorsed Wahid. And (laughs) let me just go real quick. This is uh, Rosemary O'Hara, Sunset Oratorio Board. But let's see. One of the candidates, they say, Kurum Wahid, a criminal defense attorney, owns a two-office law firm. Well, they know enough to know a two-office law firm, but I guess she didn't like Look at our story about him being a a lobbyist and having a lobbying firm. I guess that's not important to politicians. And they go through and they uh, talk about one of the candidates, Sean Sarah, who was a former principal at Terra High School, uh, laments that he's not really uh, well versed on the city budget. But I'm thinking, was Rosemary O'Hara well versed on the city budget? How does she know? What does she know about the city of Coral Springs budget? Uh, then Diana Simpson, Diane Simpson, uh, second run, calling for responsibility, um, but she didn't give a compelling vision for the city. And then uh, Melissa Cipriano, a former engineer, now a stay-at-home mom, uh, she says she's as green as they come. And Camille Wallace, I guess she, she didn't show up, I was told, yeah. Uh, but uh, then there's Randall Cutter who talks about 
being a longtime pastor and business manager at the New Dawn Community Church. Now, I was told about this. It was c- coming up. He runs a church. I guess at the meeting, they was asked, well, how many members do you have? He said about 140. Here in the paper, they say 125. Um, and then they kind of mockingly say, well, what kind of a budget is 125 people? Um, but they say, no, sorry. The best candidate is Wahid because he launched a successful law practice as well as a defense contracting business. A defense contracting business. Okay. He's been work, recognized for his work as a civil rights advocate and been board members. Uh, no mention of care. He's the co-chair of Engage Foundation, the first American Muslim lobby organization. A lobby organization that supports well-known candidates like uh, Rashida Talib, the congresswoman uh, from Michigan, I believe, been in the news with a lot of anti-Semitic remarks. Keith Ellison, the former congressman who's now the attorney general of Minnesota, who uh, barely got elected after his, his longtime girlfriend revealed he was abusive. Um, so, and so Wahid is a, has a smart and calm demeanor. And his experience as a mediator and a small business owner give him the skills to navigate the needs of residents and businesses alike. What kind of BS is that? Um, Renovate parks. We like his uh, ambitious agenda. And then it says he raised a lot of money and a lengthy list of endorsements, including Beam Fur and Barbara Sharif, both Broward County commissioners. Both commissioners represent districts nowhere near the city of Coral Springs. Then it goes on to say, well, it has been criticized by some for representing clients in high-prior terrorism cases. And then it gets the excuse in the Sixth Amendment, right to representation, even people that we don't like. Um, makes no sense. But then they go on to say that they also endorsed Joshua Simmons. Now, like we've said, Joshua Simmons, and Colonel Mahid, and Nancy Mateo, who lost in March for mayor, have been funded by groups outside of Coral Springs. About 90% of their money comes from people or organizations not in the city of Coral Springs. A new report just came out, uh, I think, late last week or early this week for Wahid. Uh, 25 contributions, only five, and the newest one, are from Coral Springs. Again, why are outside interests supporting Colonel Wahid to be in Coral Springs? Now, Nancy Mateo just released her final report, and for her last report, uh, she had a total expenditure of nearly $29,000, and the last one, almost 19000 so right up, right up to the election. And again, it was people not in Coral Spring, West Palm Beach, Boca Raton, North Miami Beach, uh, the same people that are now working for Wahid and Davey. Uh, Wahids, one of Wahids was responders who wrote to the Sun Sentinel saying that they were racist for their article work for Nancy Mateo. Um, a data company running digital ads from Cleveland, Ohio. Why are they so eager? These progressive groups, these progressive supporters, why are they so eager to, to win elections in the city of Coral Springs? Now, let me tell you a little bit about as Mayor Harris, so it's not a complete surprise. When she first came to South Florida, it was maybe 2014, 2013. First time I saw her in action was at a tourist board hearing for funding that the Florida Panthers wanted for the arena. They were trying to get it from the tourist board, which was hotel money. And at this one meeting in downtown Fort Lauderdale, the commissioner, Gary Bettman of the NHL, was there. And he gave his presentation. And there were several reporters, a lot of politicians, and Rosemary, who was relatively new then. And, you know, man, she knocking people over at the end of the hearing trying to get some face time with Gary Bettman. You know, more heading for the celebrity. Here it looks like, you know, instead of the reporters back, she's more worried about what Barbara Sharif and Bean Firm are doing. Now, Bean Firm's aide is one of the young progressives that are part of the whole crew supporting Joshua Simmons, Nancy Mateo, Colonel Mahid, Sabrina Javanella, 
uh, in uh, Hallandale Beach. They all love this climate change stuff. The Sun Sentinel, they're, they're banking on that thing. You know, even they're talking about the Everglades overflowing in Coral Springs, which is ridiculous. Uh, and solar panels. They all mention solar panels and campaign managers interested in solar energy, too. So what, you know, why wouldn't you have your reporters back? Why would you endorse a, someone who says that you're peddling in fake news that says your reporter's lying? And your editor in chief's line. You know, what's the, uh, or does she not even know? This kind of happened last year in the, in the school board race. Lori Rich Levinson's running for school board re election. She comes to the Sun Sentinel meeting. Rosemary's there. Now, usually, Rosemary brings her husband, who's not even a Sun Sentinel employee for a lot of these meetings, but she was there and Scott Travis, who was there and he's just, you know, they just got a Pulitzer prize for their coverage of the Stoneman Douglas um, shooting in the aftermath and everything going on. And Lori Rich Levinson just lays in to Scott Travis and his coverage of the school board. And if anybody knows Lori Rich Levinson, she, uh, she's kind of harsh. So she really lays into him and you know, basically reading him the riot act in front of his editor figure, most people would be like, yep, yeah, no way she's getting their endorsement. Nope. Got the endorsement. So there was Rosemary today at the county commission meeting, getting a proclamation from the mayor for their Pulitzer prize, all smiles, you know, I don't know what she did, but just remember that, you know, they were the ones backing Runcie through last year's election. The candidates that back Runcie got the support of the Sun Sentinel. Plain and simple. Everyone else was not getting any support because they didn't wear them back in Runcie. But now all of a sudden it's like, geez, everybody, you know, we were so great. You would think you would back your reporter and your editor-in-chief. At least mention it in your endorsement that there was this controversy. So, you know, these are the same folks that probably complain about the president calling CNN fake news. How dare he? You're eroding the press. Well, what's going to happen the next time the Sun Sentinel reporters out there writing about a candidate? Are they going to call up and complain? Are they going to just be able to say it's not true, it's fake news, they apologize? Um, you know, like we said at the time, we believe her. Yes, we take her, her, yes, we take her at her word. You know, we know enough. Uh, reporters, they're not going to apologize for a story, for facts. There was no correction. There was no apology in the story. What they did was flesh out the story a little bit more, give some more uh, background on the candidate, which is normal. I tell people that all the time. If there's something you need to correct, let us know. We'll correct it. Uh, if you want something to add, we'll add to it. But that's it. But instead, an elected official says, your reporter's lying. The candidate says, no, nope, your reporter's lying. Your editor-in-chief is lying. So what is it? Are they lying or is it some sentinel lying about this apology and apology was really made? We kind of, again, take the sun sentinel at their word. Um, it's just a shame that they did that. But at the same time, like we said, they're attacking – Cutter for the, the lack of uh, the small amount of members he has. We've got a story we're com- coming up uh, shortly. There's a whisper campaign. A lot of the campaigns know about uh, the videos on the Randall Cutter's website for his church, the New, Do- New Dawn Community Church. Uh, 1999 says God gave him visions uh, to warn everybody about an approaching hurricane, uh, Hurricane Irene. He was on the news and at Channel Five in Palm Beach. He's got the link up there. He's got. He wrote a book about this, uh, but still, it's, the video's getting around, trying to, I guess, question his his visions. And they're they're his vision, his wife's vision. Uh, I think a little girl in the church vision. Uh, I read the book. It's on Amazon. It's seventy seven pages. It's a quick read. Um, but it's funny how 
one religion is off limits, but this guy over dissecting how many members he has, and then we've got a whisper campaign uh, trying to, I guess, undermine whatever. But we're gonna we're gonna post the story. We're gonna post the video. We're gonna post some of the other uh, documentation. Make up your own mind. Um, question we have is, you know, Cutter was at a event at Wahid's mosque a couple of years ago. It was a PR stunt for Care. Uh, you know why politics, ideology, national stuff does not belong in local government. At the city level, it's are cops going to come when I need them? Is the garbage going to be picked up on time? Are the potholes going to be filled? That's it. None of this garbage about climate change and solar power and, you know, whatever the the protest du jour. Imagine you're – we sat at this implantation a month and a half ago – Local businesswoman, she wanted to add to her spa a massage component. She had to sit through a whole meeting with all this garbage about, I don't know, people angry about this and that, you know, an hour and a half, two hours just to sit, to just to get the okay to conduct your business. Now, if we keep doing this in cities, what's going to happen? We're, we warned you about Fort Lauderdale. Look at Fort Lauderdale. We've got this guy Weinstein and the AIDS Health Foundation. They're still making the rounds of the, the city commissioners there. Do you let that guy, after he just sent those racist attacks on a Democratic state senator in California, what's next out there? Hallandale Beach. That was what hid when the commissioner, uh, Annabelle Taub, made a joke about uh, Rashida Talib. It was Wahid and his group protesting her with Sabrina, the vice mayor, Javalana, at the news, making a big deal out of nothing. Censure, removal, all this garbage. Big protest. That's not what local government is for. It is not what local government is for. But these progressive groups from outside the state are spending all this money They want to create a bench to get more candidates. They want to have people in races to help with their other elections, and that's what they're doing. And we just found out today that the Black Caucus, Democratic Caucus, run by the daughter of County Commissioner Dale Holness, who's also a supporter of Corner and Wahid, they're offering 100 bucks to people to go work at the polls next Tuesday for Wahid. 100 bucks for people who don't live in the city of Coral Springs to work the polls at Coral Springs. That usually doesn't happen. Usually doesn't. So we only got a minute left here. You can share this on iTunes, like I said, or share the link. Listen to it at any time. Uh, we'll be back with a longer episode. We'll be back on Facebook Live. Please check out uh, us at uh, TrueBrower.com, TrueBrower TV on Facebook, RedBrower.com, RedBrower on Twitter, everything else. Well, uh, keep you posted. We'll have a couple more shows before next Tuesday's election. And as always, keep watching the skies.